So let's take a look back at the other innocent people who came before her. Families terrorized by Chicago police repeatedly raiding the wrong homes. We produced a documentary to share their stories last fall. Here again is unwarranted. It was a normal Friday. It was at nighttime. We hadn't had dinner yet. I was hungry. The TV was on. It was a reality show. Jack was in the hallway. I can see him from where I was laying on the floor. And all of a sudden. They barged in with guns. Get in the ground. I was so scared, I couldn't speak. The cops threatened my dad that they would shoot him. And one of the cops put his knee in my dad's back. My dad comes in handcuffs. And me and my brother were screaming, don't shoot my dad, don't take my dad. They searched the bathroom and they flipped the mattress. When my mom grabbed the search warrant, she looked at the names. That's when she said to the cops in the living room, you have the wrong floor, this is not us. They live upstairs. They live upstairs. I was thinking, why is this happening to us? We were just a happy family. We did not want this. My name is Peter Mendez. I'm 11 years old and I live in Chicago. And I'm in the sixth grade. I used to live at 35th and Damon, and that's where the raid happened. My mom and dad are really the greatest parents ever. They're the best parents a kid could ever wish for. <laughs> Bart. My dad works hard. He works as a janitor. My mom, she's a computer person. You want to chop the milk? No. My little brother Jack means the most of me because. He looks up to me. He's my baby brother. When I was growing up, I wanted to be a cop. But now that that happened, I kind of don't want to be a cop if that's going to happen to other kids. You're seven years old? Yes. So this was your brother's birthday party? Yes. And how old was he turning? Four. Were you excited for your brother? Yes. Why were you excited? Because at the same time I love cake. <laughs> like every time it's on my birthday I get really, <laughs> you know, I, feel, I get really excited. I came to cut cake, you know, um, celebrate, sing happy birthday, show him I love him and bring him a present. So he never got to cut his cake? No. No one got to have that cake? No. And so when the police officer came through this door, what was the police officer doing? Yeah. Pointing the gun? So I thought they were, they were going to shoot me and my brother and everybody else. He little. And well, you should never even see this. What do you see? A lot of police and so many of them. <laughs> like about, oh my God, so many of them. <laughs> oh my God. 
they just steady coming. A lot of them. At that time, I'm looking, thinking it's a joke, you know what I mean? But then you see guns. You see, like, <laughs> you see guns pointed at us. It was, like, terrifying. I didn't, they, didn't, they didn't describe their self as the police. They did not say who they were. They were, like, in regular clothes. The whole front room, um, they tore up tossed the couches or, you know, uh, threw the food on the floor, um, tossed his birthday gifts, you know, and just damaged, like, anything they got their hands on, they just flipped. After they left, the cake was on the floor in the corner with the number four stuck down in it. I'm okay. You're hearing this? Yeah, it's just, like, emotional for my daughter to fully understand and feel the way she feel at just seven years old. So, yeah, it's always emotional for me, so I'm sorry. <laughs> She's comforting you right now. Right. <laughs> Should she have had to have gone through something like that? No. And that's her first time ever experiencing things like that. And I'm so surprised and proud of her that she's taken it well better than me. And I'm 33, and it's like, yeah. <laughs> it's hard for you. Yeah. Knowing your children were put in that position. Yeah. On my son's birthday at that. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mama. If the police pointed guns at you during that raid, raise your hand. They had us all run to like a corner of the room. It was in the kitchen though. What were you thinking at that point? I was scared. Did you know what was happening? No. Why do you think the police would point a gun at you? At first I, I didn't know. The informant told them that he'd been buying heroin out of the second floor apartment mm -hmm. for two months from a guy named Ace, Derek Bell. <laughs> and then nobody stood there but me and my boys. That's why I kept telling them, like, don't nobody stay here but me. So I'm like, who are you looking for? They never told me. I knew they had the wrong apartment when they looked at each other crazy. This is the person police were looking for. Mm -hmm. But no one's ever even seen this guy. Nope. I got more records involved with the raid. Mm -hmm. Took a while, but we got him. The guy that they raided your house looking for, mm -hmm. if they would have done their homework, the guy they were looking for was in prison. Mm -hmm. And he had been in prison since 2009. Rolling. For the last, nearly the last year, we've been investigating wrong raids or raids involving search warrants that had inaccuracies. We want to make sure that we're achieving law enforcement objectives in ways that assure the safety of the officers, but also go, 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 go. Not in ways that minimize the impact and the footprint of government on the lives of individuals, especially when we're talking about children, and certainly in the context of when we're talking about invading people's homes, the very essence of what the Fourth Amendment is about. When your mom told them yeah, you're in the wrong apartment, what did they say? Curtis Roberts, they live upstairs. They live upstairs. <laughs> But they already know it's the wrong apartment. Oh, yeah. Something? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Anything back there? Why do they need to search? They kept searching, trying to find something on us. Okay, you okay, Sorry. This is not the first time, it's not the last time. They're going to keep doing it. Anybody can tell you anything off the street. Do you believe everything, you know, a person tells you? My name is Officer Brian Collins, C-O-L-L-I-N-S. Star number? 16773. Rank? Police officer. You were really cooperative. 
because I didn't want to get shot. That's the only thing I was worried about. You could see how close that gun was to your face. Yeah. I could see it in the video. So I get to walk into the tour of the door. Mm -hmm. I was, I walked to the door, it just burst it open. They just came down the hallway with a shield and a gun. Wrong door. But I knew, like, you got the wrong house. I knew, like, I knew. This was that officer's first warrant. The one that got the warrant for your mm -hmm. house, that's the first warrant he ever got. He just probably put them out there. This is the audio recorded statement of accused member police officer Brian Collins, star 16773. Prior to the execution of your warrant that day, how many apartments did you believe were on the first floor? One. Did you do a simple internet search of Google or any other internet search engines to confirm the number of units in that building? No. Did you personally conduct any surveillance of this location to ascertain if the alleged transactions were occurring at the rear door and to verify that you had the correct target unit? When I drove by the front and rear of the... But any system. surveillance after the drive-by? No. It was hard, like, seeing guns right there just pointed in the face. Like, that's how we lost our mother, to gun violence. So it was terrifying. So you still have that emotional scar? Yes. From losing your mom? Yes. When you do lose a family member like that, to gun violence, I'm sorry. I know it's hard. I'm sorry, Nishan. I'm State Senator Jacqueline Collins. I represent the 16th Legislative District. Clear, 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 clear. clear. I think that I'll probably because they know that they're in a certain community uh, where um, they feel they can get away with that kind of behavior. And I think because there's no discipline, there's no follow-up, there should be something in place, a departmental discipline for these violations where people violate, civil rights are violated. I think that is totally unacceptable, it's unconscionable, and that's why we need to get involved in mandating that they, they're held accountable for that misuse of uh, a power, abuse of power. Superintendent, just switch gears for a second. Um, can you talk with us about wrong raids and bad search warrants? Sure. You know, listen, we do thousands of um, search warrants a year, and we do everything we can to ensure that we are uh, targeting the right location. But at the end of the day, you know, we rely on uh, citizens' information most of the time. But we're not perfect. We're human. Sometimes we make mistakes, but we try to provide the officers all the training we can to ensure that that type of thing doesn't are happen. You, are you tracking them? Can, do you know how many times they get it wrong? Yeah, we look at it. Do you have actual numbers? I don't have it off the top of my head, but we do have that. Because we've been asking for numbers. You hit the apartment of the Mendezes, correct? That's correct. Okay. 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 I know the, I know that it's them upstairs. Okay. Mr. and Mrs. Mendez and their children, Peter and Jack, were not the intended targets of your search warrant. Correct? No, they were not. Okay. Can you point to any training in, in your training record, any specific training course in your training record, um, where they taught you that uh, you should find out when kids are likely to not be home and execute the warrant during those times? No. Do you think the police were very, way too rough with you? Yes. I even tried to shake their hands. Two of them just shrugged by. 
And then one just shook my hand. Because that was the guy that realized that they were in the wrong apartment. How did it make you feel when the officers wouldn't even shake your hand? I just felt that they're unpolite because you know, I was trying to be nice. It's okay. It's okay, Peter. You're doing a good job. What are you thinking about right now? <laughs> Just the saddest moment. They really hurt you that day. <laughs> what did that make you feel? It made me feel like the police weren't even what I thought they were. You had a different image of what a police yeah. officer was. You wanted to be a police officer? <laughs> I don't know. I just, I just don't want you anymore. I don't think they're heroes. Mayor, what's being done to protect kids, especially innocent families, from these wrong, repeated wrong raids? We can't have this. Um, what it does when we make mistakes, um, and particularly when we make mistakes uh, in the way in which we deal with your, our children, um, that, has, that leaves an indelible scar um, that is very, very difficult to repair those kinds of relationships. In the larger context, of the very, very sort of challenged relationship between the police department and the public generally, and the issues of trust or lack of trust, every one of these incidents is an aggravator and a perpetuator of this mistrust that exists. We the targets, black people. Even though we're black, doesn't mean they gotta do this to us. It's like people think all Mexican and blacks are bad, but they're thinking wrong. They feel that the police come in with no uh, sensibilities, with implicit bias in how they re relate to them. Dehumanizing, disrespectful, and I believe unlawful. How old are you, Deviana? Six. Do you know what it means to tell the truth? Yes. It means that you are telling the people what happened. So do you promise that you'll tell the truth? Yes. Very good. I am the videographer on May 15th, 2017, for the recording of the deposition of Daviana Simmons being taken at 219 South Dearborn Street. Do you know what a gun is? Yes. Do you know what it's used for? It's used to shoot. To shoot who or what? To shoot at people. Um, did the... Did the police point uh, a gun at anybody else in your house that they day? They pointed a gun at me. They pointed a gun at you? Yes? Yes. Can you tell me what you remember about that? That they put a gun in my chest. Can you tell me what the prayer is that you say before you go to bed? I pray that the police don't come back. I pray that everything is safe in my house. I pray that everything is safe, and I pray that I have good dreams in Jesus' name. Amen. Because these officers are not trained on how to interact with young children, there's going to be a lot more trauma. Other major departments, uh, Cincinnati, Cleveland, uh, Charlottesville, San Francisco, Baltimore, they have trained their officers on how the youth brain works, how youth brains develop, and how officers should go out of their way not to expose young people, young children, to trauma. It should be part of the pre-raid plan to discuss exactly what you're going to do 
if you encounter children. I think we need to take those precautions to protect the things that happen to Peter does not happen to other children. Was there a, was there a personal consequence or, or an outcome that you learned about uh, after, there was no, after this day? There was no personal, um, I wasn't punished in any way, I wasn't no reprimand or anything like that. Did anybody talk to you about the investigation that you did? Um, no. Do you know that like, when you met me, it was exactly one year ago today. Really? I looked at my calendar. I interviewed you on August 8th, 2018. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I know that. The Inspector General has launched an investigation, and a law is being signed after your name to protect children in raid situations. So, do you... Are you sense? Are you are you understanding how important all this is? Yeah, very important. One year ago today. I can't believe it. Uh, I still have to smile, smile just because it's just a really big thing. Well, what are you going to tell your friends? I, I don't really know. I'm just going to say, not going to brag about it or anything. I'm just going to say, hey, um, look, so the governor signed the bill so that way every single kid or every single person that has been raided, wrong raids, has been protected. Just because there's a law doesn't mean they're going to follow it sometimes. Because you, you got some people that care and you got some people that don't care. I was scared to use the bathroom by myself. I was scared to walk home by myself. I was scared to turn the lights off and go through the back door. That's how I got to therapy. I didn't like therapy at first, but I can now walk home by myself. I can use the bathroom and turn off the lights. When I was growing up, I wanted to be a cop. But now that that happened, I want to be a doctor. I am Peter Mendez. I am brave, I am smart, I am capable. Sometimes it gets sad, but I know how to work through it. Some might be learning about this issue because of the Anjanet Young case, but Dave, that body of work shows how big this problem is. Yeah, when you see those faces and hear those stories, you know, your heart hurts. And uh, we couldn't have told those stories without the children and the victims and the body cameras. The body cameras bring transparency into the room. They're an element of the truth. It's why Anjanette Young wanted to see her body cameras. She wanted to reveal them to the world. She wanted to shine a light on them to fix this problem for others. Yeah, bless that young Peter too. What a sage. Mm -hmm. Just because you have a law doesn't mean people will follow it. God bless our men and women in blue. Lion's share are good, but we know some aren't following it. Dave, have you talked to any of these officers who are caught up in, in a lot of times repeat offenders, if you will, in these raids? Well, I've talked to officers that are watching the series and are upset with it because they're upset with their own department. They, they, they feel they're also being put in jeopardy on a bad raid because if you don't do your homework and you're going into the wrong house, you put your whole team, your whole raid team at risk. They could get shot. They could get killed too. So nobody wants to go into the wrong house. It's just sloppy police work. Yeah, that is a point that is duly noted. And throughout that remarkable documentary, we saw almost a reparative nature that happened to young Peter, from the crying to the end to the, th the thoughtfulness of a young man. And one can only hope that now for 
and Jeanette, who is just starting this process after just seeing the video finally released after two years. Let's give her a word here. Thank you for being the investigator that you are and shining a light on this, not giving up on it. And I know you, I appreciate that you're doing it for me, but I know you don't do it just for me. I know that there are so many families and so many women and children who um, appreciate the work that you, Day Savini, in Channel 2 Chicago are doing as it relates to this matter. Now, outrage over what happened to her continues to grow. In the next few minutes, Black Lives Matter, Women's All Points Bulletin, and Good Kids Mad City are having a news conference outside police headquarters. You see that live picture there. And we will be there. That was one hour, uninterrupted. Two and a half years of dogged investigative work, bookended by a crying little boy to a naked, scared social worker. Today, Mayor Lightfoot was very open that these major reforms were prompted by journalism, the journalism of the CBS2 investigators. There is a reason our profession is protected by the Constitution. The free press has done its job here. Now it's on you, policymakers, for real this time. We want to thank Anjanette Young and those other families who shared such difficult moments with us here at CBS2 and the incredible work of Dave Civiti and the CBS2 investigators. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Marisa Vedra. I'm Brad Edwards. Remember, you can watch Unwarranted anytime or Anjanette's story on our website.